Hi, this is Jijo. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to focus on effective reading. And this is for reading comprehension. When I look at reading, or in fact, look at a reader, for instance, you, I've usually seen people in these two categories. One is a lazy reader and two is a nervous reader. The lazy reader is the one who is not really interested in reading. He or she wants to quickly go through the passage, just hit the question and somehow magically answer the question. The, by the time they finish the passage, we have hardly any what just happened. And then there are other kind of readers who are kind of nervous, who wants to memorize every single thing that's there in the passage, gets into detail. And then after about reading two paragraphs, is kind of lost, uh, not able to figure out what just went. And then gets completely confused at the end of it. And when you look at the question, pretty nervous. What we want to be is this guy in the middle right and who is this person this person is someone who's effective energetic excited and efficient while doing reading comprehension let's be this guy how can we be this guy and that's what i'm going to do in this particular session if you look at reading comprehension you are given a certain number of time the time that you spend per passage has got these two large component one is that you're going to spend time in reading on and comprehending the passage that's the T passage. And then you spend time in solving each of these questions. Time for question number one plus question number two, two and so on and so forth. How many of your question is available? And that's the total time that is required. Normally, we worry too much about the time to read the passage. We, we believe that if I have to increase my reading comprehension speed or the time that I take per passage specifically, I have to read faster. But one thing that you must understand, most of the time that we waste is in a question and especially trying to figure out which of these two options is correct. We normally can eliminate two options. We are stuck with these two options and we are not then trying to figure out which one of them is correct. And that's where the real time waste happens. And instead of actually looking at reading the f f passages faster, what we need to look at is to read the passage better. Read it once, but read it well. So how much time do we require to read a passage? That's a question. Let's take an example of CAT as an exam, the common admission test conducted by the IAMs. And in the verbal ability section of that CAT, the, there are broadly two areas, that is reading comprehension and there is verbal ability. And there are five passages, totaling 24 questions from reading comprehension and 10 questions from verbal ability. And you are given 60 minutes to solve that particular section. Now, you probably require about 20 minutes to solve those 10 verbal ability questions, sometimes 50, but I think that by and large you have to keep about 20 minutes. Now, in that 60 minutes, 20 minutes is taken by verbal ability, which means we have 40 minutes to solve those five passages. That would then mean that I have 8 minutes per passage. Okay, that would mean that I probably will have to spend 4 to 5 minutes to solve the question, and we have about 3 to 4 minutes in reading the passage. The focus is how can I read a passage in three to four minutes and one of the things that we tend to believe is that three to five minutes is too less a time in fact that's a lot of time please do understand uh, the passage that you that are given will have a multiple paragraph and each paragraph would be about eight, uh, 80 to 100 words and 80 to 100 words does not take more than 45 seconds to read uh, at the maximum one minute even if you read slowly, you will not take more than a minute. So you can easily read passages uh, in about three to four minutes. But the key is to understand what you read. A passage has got multiple paragraphs and each of these paragraphs essentially has a particular idea. So the paragraph number one has one idea, paragraph number two has an, has an idea, paragraph number three has the main idea, paragraph number four has an idea. And for the whole passage, these ideas are somewhat, somewhat connected. Our understanding, of course, is to understand the idea of each of these paragraphs and then look at out of these four ideas, which is that main idea and which are those of supporting idea. Understanding this map of the passage is what's going to help us effectively read a passage. Now, let me take an example of a paragraph. Let's look at this paragraph. At this point in time, you could pause the video, probably set a timer and read this paragraph and see what you understood about this paragraph. I hope you have done that, you have read this paragraph, if you have not, pause it now and read it, uh, it's going to help. Now, when we look at the paragraph, let me read this uh, paragraph, it says, English IV betrays his poor reputation as a nuisance by its unparalleled ability to provide shade. 
By seamlessly covering the exterior of a building, it works as a natural insulator, blocking the sun and decreasing air conditioning costs. This means big savings for both building tenants and homeowners alike. And it can happen quickly too. Under the proper conditions, established English IV can grow to cover an area of roughly 500 square feet per year. Given that most homes have a roof measuring roughly 2000 square feet, IV friendly homeowners can rest assured that their roof will be completely covered in about 4 years. When considering growth rates of newly applied IV, just remember the old adage. First year it sleeps, second year it creeps, third year it leaps. For English IV, this is especially true. Now when you read this paragraph, something is going on in your head. You have to figure out what is that I just read, how much of the thing that I read should I keep, keep in my memory? Should I remember every single thing that is mentioned here? Answer is no. After all, is a reading comprehension passage. The passage is going to be there. Uh, the passage is not going to go away. You can always come back to the passage. But for me to understand what is going on, it is important for me to figure out out of these sentences that are there in this particular paragraph, which are those sentences which is important. Now, if you look closely, the paragraph started by making this claim that English IV betrays a poor reputation as nuisance by its unparalleled ability to provide shade. The first sentence talks about English IV has got this ability to provide shade. And when you look at the rest of the paragraph, is it's just explaining that ability that English IV has. So, in the first sentence, a claim has been made and the rest of the sentence, it has justified that claim. Let's look at a closer look at what is the claim that is being made. Now, this says, it had a poor reputation as nuisance, but it betrays it. Betrays poor reputation too negative, therefore that's a positive. The author's view is that whatever is a poor, pure, poor reputation English IV has, that's not correct. Why? Because it has got this unparalleled ability to provide shade. That's what the author is claiming. Now, if you look at the, the justification that is being given, there are three things that are being said. One, it's a natural insulator. Two, it, there can be big savings. 3. It happens quickly and the rest of it is detailing those uh, those facts. So, and when you look at uh, therefore this whole paragraph, this is what you can write as a note. English IV, here as mentioned as EI, has a poor reputation but, but it betrays itself which means it does not have a poor reputation because it provides shade and it, it's a great insulator, the, there is a reduction of cost, it grows very fast. So, those are the three things that is mentioned. But at the end of the day, when we are reading a, a passage, it has got multiple paragraphs. What you need to understand is what is that single idea of this particular paragraph. The single idea of this paragraph is in this sentence that it, 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 it has English IV betrays its poor reputation as a nuisance by its unparalleled ability to provide shade. So when you are an effective reader, you must understand what is that particular aspect of that paragraph that I should remember and what are the other things that I should leave. Right. Now let's look at this paragraph. And this is a slightly more a dense paragraph to understand. Why don't you pause the video, read this paragraph and check whether you got the right idea. I hope you have read this paragraph. Uh, if you have not read, please pause it and read it. Okay, it will help you. It says, present day philosophers usually envision their discipline as an endure that has been since antiquity distinct from and superior to any particular intellectual discipline such as theology or science. Such philosophical concerns as the mind-body problem or more generally the nature of human knowledge they believe are basic human questions whose tentative philosophical solutions have served as a necessary foundation on which all other intellectual speculation has rested. The basis of this view, however, lies in a serious misinterpretation of the past, a projection of modern concerns onto past events. The idea or of an autonomous discipline called philosophy distinct from and sitting in judgment on such pursuits a theology and science turns out on close examination to be of quite recent origin. Now this part he is talking about what is the belief of the present day philosophers about their discipline which is philosophy. What they believe that it is distinct, it is superior to any other discipline and this has been the case since antiquity. Now, this is a belief of a present day philosopher. And then in the next sentence, you see the transition word, however. So, here is where the author is getting involved. It says, the basis of this view, however, lies in a serious misinterpretation of the past, a project of modern concerns onto the past. So, at least we can understand here 
whatever is the belief that the present day philosophers have, that belief has got a serious problem. The next sentence, the author explains why. It says, the idea of an autonomous discipline called philosophy, distinct from a sitting in judgment on such pursuit of theology and science, turns out on close examination to be of quiet recent origin. The author's issue is that philosophy being different is something that is recent. If you look at the belief of the present day philosophers, they believe that it is since antiquity. It is since antiquity they are distinct and superior. Now the author is saying that's not the case. It's of quiet recent origin. Now if you look at the structure here, there is a certain belief. Author says that the belief is wrong and tells us what is wrong with that belief. And if you want to take notes, it's it's this PDP and this case present day philosopher believe that philosophy is distinct and superior and this has happened since antiquity. Now author's view is that no, it's a recent origin and non not since antiquity. When you leave this paragraph, in your mind is that author's view is that present present day philosophers got it wrong. So what do we just do? It's like a traffic light. A red signal is a signal where I'm gonna stop. The yellow signal is telling us, okay, be cautious. It is going to give you some hints. And the green is when I'm saying, okay, fine, a lot of details. I'm going to read it, of course, but I'm not going to break my head tight to decipher what it says uh, in, in a great detail. Now, what, what is that? What is a red signal for me? These are the claims, the opinions, or the conclusion drawn by the author. And you can look at certain sentences and say, okay, fine, he's making a broad claim, a gentle claim, a conclusion, an opinion, a criticism, an idea, something is presenting in that particular paragraph and the yellow signs are transition words I see a word however I say okay fine author is going to get involved the I see a word for instance okay author is going, now going to give me an example uh, there's a question that is read is India a great country okay then I know that okay fine he's going to answer this question now so th there are these transition word question there which is going to tell me okay fine I have to be a little careful and see where it is going a and the green ones are the ones where I'm saying, okay, the author is mere giving a reason, author is justif justifying something, giving details, giving examples. Usually author makes a claim and gives an example for that particular claim. You can pause this video, read this, and then come back and see whether you got the essence of each of this paragraph and also the connection between paragraphs. Right, let's read this. Let's go with each paragraph try and make sense of what is mentioned in the paragraph and then connect the ideas between the three paragraphs and then figure out what is the main idea and what are the supporting ideas of the paragraph. Okay, let's start with the first paragraph. It says, in the God delusion, Richard Dawkins talks about our inherent philosophical tendency towards logical fallacies. He references cargo cults, tribes that form superstitious beliefs around the arrival of US soldiers upon their islands. They believed that communicating on the radio and marching in unison were all rituals that brought precious gifts from the heavens in the form of supplies that came in by aeroplane to the island. They saw what to them looked like st strange ceremonial dancing when the soldiers were marching. And the logic was this was a ritual to be performed to please the gods who then bought goods beyond their wildest dreams. They saw that A came before me and made the logical fallacy that A caused B. You see, the author makes a claim there, uh, which is in red. The God delusion, Richard Dawkins talks about our inherent psychological tendency towards logical fallacies. We have a tendency to make logical fallacies. And he gives examples there of cargo cults to justify that particular claim. So the takeaway from paragraph number one, so there is a tendency that we have towards logical fallacies or logical flaws. And one example of logical flaws is given is about the cargo cults. Now, now I have to point out at this point in time, I have read something about cargo cult. I, I, I reasonably understand what they have mentioned there, but I'm not going to bother too much. And if there's a question specifically asking me about cargo cults, I know where it is. I'll come back, read, read, the, read it again, and then answer the question. The second paragraph says, genus homo, have possessed logical reasoning skills for millennia. However, we have not always possessed the knowledge upon which to base them. Logic works when based in knowledge and this has an evolutionary advantage. When our ancestors saw the prints of an animal in the sands, they had the capacity of understanding that the animal had been there. And this was reasoning based upon knowledge. We knew what kind of prints a certain animal would make and we could deduce from seeing the print which direction the animal was going in.
This was useful in both hunting and avoiding predators. You can already see a certain example of ancestors is given here, but he's also making a point. The point that is being made here is logic works when based in knowledge, and this has evolution advantage. I uh, start by saying, build the base by saying that we always possessed logical reasoning skills, but we did not have knowledge. Logic works when based in knowledge. Logic works when based in knowledge. And this has got a certain evolutionary advantage. It says logic works when there is logic and knowledge. And let's see what the last paragraph is. As the knowledge increases, we realize what causes disease and what can be done to prevent it. We know how to engineer our way out of famine with the knowledge of crops and fertilizers. The failed logic of the old has been abandoned. Logic is a powerful tool when combined with knowledge, but without it, it can misfire and lead one to believe things that are unreasonable and often harmful. What you see here is, as the knowledge increases, we realize what caused disease. So, as the knowledge increases, we realize a lot of things. But the point the author is making is that lo logic is powerful tool when combined with knowledge, and without it, it can be harmful. So here it says, logic when knowledge is great, but logic without knowledge or logic minus knowledge is going to be harmful. So when you leave this passage, what are the things that you must in have in mind? You must have those ideas of each paragraph. Let's look at the idea of this paragraph. Paragraph number one, we have a tendency towards logical fallacies. Paragraph number two, logic works when combined with knowledge. Paragraph number three, logic plus knowledge is great and logic minus knowledge is harmful. Paragraph number one is building the case. Paragraph number two gives us the idea as to why knowledge is important for logic. Paragraph number three tells us that knowledge plus logic is great. Logic without knowledge is harmful. And that's that's a passage. Now let's look at this question based on that particular passage. This says the main idea of the passage is to do what? You could pause the video and figure out what the answer is. Right. Is it to welcome the realization that failed logic is not good? Or is it to highlight that logic is powerful when combined with knowledge? Or is it to explain how our ancestors use logic and knowledge? Or is it to illustrate how certain tribes develop superstition? Very clearly, the answer is to highlight that logic is powerful when combined with knowledge. Yeah. For example, let's look at a specific question. The question is, the author gives the example of the cargo cults to highlight which of the following. If the question is, why does the author bring in car cargo cult? Why did he bring the example? Why did he give that example? One, we know that this is in paragraph number one. And we also remember that in paragraph number one, the author's point is that we have a tendency towards logical fallacy. Therefore, the reason why author brought in cargo cults in the whole discussion is to is to explain the point that we have in inherent tendency towards logical fallacy, or from an overall perspective, that knowledge is important. So, if you look at answer choice number three, that is the right answer choice. Understanding without knowledge leads to logic becoming a fallacy. So that's very clear. That's the point that the author used. Other answer choices are incorrect. So what I want you guys to be is an efficient reader. The more you practice, you'll get better at it. So what you need to do is look at each paragraph, understand the main idea, understand the main idea of each, each of the paragraph and see how the paragraph is moving. What is the connection between paragraph? This will help you in terms of answering the questions of reading comprehension accurately. Thank you.